Hey, and welcome to this Chess Base uh, 60 Minutes course. Uh, my name is Louis Engel. I'm a chess grandmaster from Germany. And in the following three videos, we're going to look at the Scandinavian opening, which is an opening for black and arises after the moves e4 by white. And now black is playing the move d5. And yeah, this d5 here is considered to be a sideline. It's, it's not as often played as the probably two main moves e5 and c5, of course. Uh, but d5 still happens a lot of games on all different levels, uh, also on grandmaster level and in top level chess. Um, probably the most famous uh, person using this variation is Magnus Carlsen as a surprise weapon, uh, not only in Rapid and Blitz, but also in classical games. Uh, so it's definitely worth having a look at. Still, uh, it's not a very critical opening. So in, in all the lines I will show, we get the opening advantage for white. Um, yeah, nevertheless, we should know a couple of things. And... Yeah, there are also a couple of, of variations which I think are already pretty good for white if you know them. So you get the chance on a huge advantage after the opening uh, against certain lines by black. We will look into that uh, later. So yeah, overall, I think very important uh, sideline here, the move d5. And definitely a line where you sh should have your repertoire and should you know, yeah, know your lines. Um, yeah, as I said, especially in uh, shorter time controls like uh, blitz and um, rapid chess, very, very frequently used uh, by black players. So yeah, after d5, we should know what to do. And yeah, first obvious move, we have to take this pawn. I mean, our e4 pawn was attacked, so we take on d5. And in this video, we will deal with the move knight to f6 here, uh, which is not the main line. Main line is uh, queen takes d5 here, of course, which we will deal in the next two videos. But after knight to f6, uh, which is also played quite often, um, black's idea is pretty simple. He uh, wants to take with a knight on d5, um, this pawn. Uh, but here, yeah, I, I can say that we get the advantage definitely, and our main idea is to get the full pawn center by playing d4 and c4, uh, which will be yeah pretty easy achievable against this knight f6 here. So we play d4, and now black has a choice. Um, yeah, the big main move here is to move knight takes d5. Uh, despite that, there's also, well, there's the move queen takes d5, which looks a bit odd in this uh, move order, normally black takes on the second move uh, with a queen on d5, uh, but here I think there's nothing better or easier than just playing knight to c3 uh, for us, which will directly transpose to the main lines after either queen a5 or queen d6, so we will have a look at that in the next videos. Um, yeah, Instead you could also go for, for knight f3 following up with uh, pawn to c4, but I, I thought this is not so clear um, for white, so I, I think it's more practical to just transpose to the main line here. Yeah, so there's also a third move, which is the move bishop to g4. And this move is very tricky, especially in blitz games, because I, I remember also played this a couple of times with white. And bishop g4 is kind of a provo provoking move because uh, we get the opportunity to hang on to our central pawn by playing the move f3, attacking the bishop. So black has to go back, bishop f5, for example. And yeah, either now c4 or g4, bishop g6 and, and c4, next move. And we hang on to our strong uh, yeah, extra pawn on d5 here. But that's not the variation I would recommend because I think it's very, very risky for white to go for this. I mean, we have only moved pawns uh, until move 6 and also weakened our king side uh, yeah, pretty badly by playing the move f3, g4. So we take a lot of risk here and a lot of unnecessary risk because there's a way easier approach to this position after bishop g4. Uh, yeah, so therefore, if you want to dive into detail here after f3 you have to know your variation is pretty well but i think there's a way easier approach here for white uh, also giving us a uh, simple advantage here it's the move bishop to b5 check and after this move play doesn't get very sharp it gets very easy and i think it's definitely the more practical choice here um yeah black normally plays knight b to d7 um he can try c6, which looks like a double attack because the bishop is hanging and also the queen on d1, of course, uh, is still hanging. But here for c6, we can just take on c6 and uh, use the tactics because after bishop takes d d1, which would be a, quite a big mistake, we will play c7, uh, win back the queen, and also in the end win the bishop on um, d1, being a whole piece up. So uh, black can't play like this. If black takes on c6, uh, either with a pawn, b takes c6, bishop e2, everything protected and we are just a healthy pawn up so this is not recommendable for black uh, but also after knight takes c6 knight f3 it's it's simply one pawn up for us um, i don't see any compensation for black probably the only idea black has is to go queen a5 check knight c3 and now long castle 
trying to get some tactics work uh, with knight to d4 or e5. But we can refute this idea very easily. Take on c6 here. B takes c6 and now queen to d3 is the uh, strongest move. Just stepping out of this pin. Um, knight e5 is coming, also short castle. Uh, we will simply uh, get out of the way with our king and black will have a very, very bad uh, position king on c8 and still be a pawn down. So uh, this is very good for white. And yeah, actually or already white is winning here objectively. Uh, so this move c6, definitely nothing to be afraid of here. Uh, so most black players will play the move knight b7, but by that blocking the queen, of course, uh, on its way to d5. So uh, having pushed the knight to d7 is actually good for us. And now we drop back with our bishop. So again, I, I don't want to play f3 here, although it might be possible, but I think bishop e2 is the more easier uh, choice here. And here black has nothing better than exchanging the bishops. Queen takes e2 and now knight takes d5. Uh, but now, yeah, sooner or later we get this perfect pawn set up by, by playing c4 here, getting a space advantage, getting the easier development. For example, knight f3. We could also go c4 right away. It will just transpose to the same. e6, castle, bishop e7, c4. Uh, so, yeah, I think you don't have to know any moves here because uh, after a lot of different moves, white is just a little bit better here with the space advantage, with the better central control here with these pawns. So knight f6, knight c3, castle, bishop f4. And yeah, this is kind of a typical uh, position for the Scandinavians. So very often we have a space advantage and the better control over the center with this pawn on d4 and also pawn on c4. And the engines are usually very happy with our position here. So often they give already a huge advantage, like almost plus one in a lot of positions. But I think we shouldn't be like too excited about our position because after all, black is very solid, like doesn't have any weaknesses. Um, of course, we are better, but we are not as much better as the engine might think. Uh, so just, I only want to remind you to be a little bit more cautious here. It's not as good as the engine suggests often in these positions. Uh, but nevertheless, we can be very happy. Uh, our next moves are also pretty simple. Just rook d1, rook e1, maybe h3. And yeah, we just have the advantage here for white.